Hey, we have a special treat on Woodworking with Wes today. We're here with professional painter, Jared, and he's gonna show us how to clean and paint a door. We're just gonna stand back, let him show us how it's done. Let's watch. Thank you, Wes. Uh, we're gonna do something that's not, that's out of the ordinary. I have an old door. Uh, the paint is in pretty decent shape, so I don't need to do a whole lot of prep to it. Um, but what I want to do is, even the door has been kind of cleaned, I want to wipe a little lacquer thinner on the door. Lacquer thinner is a great cleaner. It's really hard on the surface. If you use too much, too long, you'll ruin the finish. Um, but before you paint, if you just use a little bit of lacquer thinner and you wipe it down, and it makes the surface kind of tacky, and then the paint will stick to it. So you won't have a problem with the peeling like you do when you have paint on top of paint on a door, especially a door where it gets a lot of the scratching and marks and such. Now when I paint a door, I like to paint on the inside panels and work out. And when you paint, it's best to have a, uh, keep a wet edge, so I'll do inside section and then, and then I'll, I'll work out. And I have to go pretty fast. Now while I'm letting this rest, let me talk about brushes. A good brush makes all the difference. You gotta have the right size, the right quant kind, and a good quality brush. For example, you don't want a, a little brush like this to paint the door. You can't keep a wet edge. It's too hard to paint with a small brush. This is a good size brush for getting corners or even a bigger brush. And then sometimes I'll use an artist brush when painting a door. Notice I started wiping the inside first. Now I'm wiping the outside because I want this to, the lacquer thinner is only good for about five minutes. And so I have to paint the door pretty quick. And if it takes me too long, I'll wipe the lacquer thinner down. So I wiped the inside and then I did the, the tops. When painting doors and trim, I like to use an alkalid paint. It has a harder, stronger, tougher finish. Um, it's a little thinner, a little runnier, but it, but it gives a stronger, tougher finish for doors where, where if you touch it with your, the oils on your hand, won't dissolve it and, and it makes it uh, more durable. Okay, explain to us what an alkalide paint is. I mean, is it an oil base or a water base? It or? used to be oil base, uh -huh. but nowadays it's really hard to get oil base. But they have the water base alkalids that are just as good, if not better, because the water based alkalid paints do not fade and change colors like the oil base do. Okay, is this available at local retail paint suppliers? All, all paint suppliers should have. Oh, alkalid. okay. You all ask right. for an alkalid or a urethane paint. Okay, thank you. So I like I said, I'll start with the inside. And I and when I paint it, I, I, I'm not worrying about being neat at the moment. I want to get the paint in there. And I paint in different directions. I want to, I just dab it in there. I want to get all the cracks and corners. Like so. And I want to get it in there. And and this I won't cover it into in one coat. I'm not going to try to get it in one coat because you won't happen. So don't even try to paint. If you're changing colors, don't even try to get it in one coat because it's not going to happen. You'll paint it too thick. You'll have runs. You'll be a gunky mess. Plan on two coats. The second coat goes on fast. Um, it just It's a lot easier if you just plan on two coats. Okay, see I just painted every different kind of direction. Now I, I get my brush kind of cleaned off and then I paint with the grain of the wood. See at this angle here? I just go with the grain of the wood. And I'm not worried if I miss a little spot, I can get that on the next coat. See how I get the grain? And I take my time to get it right. I want the, the lines to be exact. If they're not, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. But to do that, you have to have the right amount of paint, the right brush. That's why I like a three inch sash. It's a little bit big for the small grains, but it, for an overall door, it works great. Get the sash 
Put it in there. Is there a particular type or brand name of brush that is the best? You know, Purdy has the has the better brushes. They used to be real good. They're not as good as they were, but I haven't found a better brush yet. Okay, Purdy. And that's P-U-R-D-Y? P-U-R-D-Y. Very good. Thank you. And then I'll take this and I go, can you get up close? I don't know if you can. I get right up to the top and I draw a straight lane. I can't go all the way down. And I get like this and I go up to here. And then I go on this side and I go smooth. Now, and I'll show you on the runs, uh, on the sides, um, what I mean. It, because you can't just do hard stops and starts. You have to lift off like an airplane, land like a gentle airplane. Otherwise, you'll see the stops and starts. You want a continuous flow. And if you do this way, you won't see or you won't notice. I'm cleaning off my spills. I'm going to paint over it. I'm just cleaning off my spills on the side in the direction of the wood. But doing this, you will not see any paint strokes. They will be there, you won't notice them. And with this uh, urethane paint, it dries a little slower, has some of the characteristics of an oil base, where you have a little more uh, working time than you do with a regular latex paint. Okay. Like again, I slap it on in every direction. I'm not worried about being neat at first. I got to get the right amount of paint on there. You know, sometimes I'll take my paintbrush and I just jab it in those corners. Just kind of jab it to get it in there. So, and then I got the right amount. Then I'll dry my brush off on the next spot. So, so I, and then I start lightly cleaning my brush strokes. Just, it just takes one touch. I, I didn't lift off right, so there's a hard start or hard stop. I'm gonna lightly do it again. And the same here. And I got it on the 45. I've got to cut it right on the 45. Otherwise, you'll see it. It's got to be straight and exact. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's not that hard. And then Now, Jared, for our viewers' information, how long have you been a professional painter? I've done painting throughout my, most of my life. Um, I did home repairs, home improvement for years and years. Uh, I started out at Home Depot working in the paint department. Um, and a lot of what I learned has been trial and error. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I made almost every paint error possible, and, I'm, and I can still make a few, uh, but I get a chance to learn from them. And uh, I guarantee you, my mistakes are a lot cheaper if you listen to my mistakes than uh, trying them on your own. <laughs> Very good. Sometimes I'll take an artist, here's where the artist brush comes in. I use it both now and later. If I get a little too much in the corners, I can clean it out and draw the lines with the artist brush to get it cleaned out, to get all the nooks and crannies. And if I get too thick on the edges, it, I can remove what I need. I got a little slop on the sides. So I'm just not worried about it. I'm cleaning it up in the direction of the wood and I'll come back and hit that in just a few minutes. Again, jabbing it in the corners, getting in every direction, getting the right amount of paint on. And you can go pretty fast. 
fact, the faster you paint, the better the door. Gives you more time to uh, play with the uh, final brush stroke. And how long would you say that it takes, you know, once you get to the point where you're doing a pretty decent job at your painting, you can paint a door in what, 10 minutes, 15? About 10, 15 10, minutes. 10 minutes, Depending right. on the door. That is great to know that you can paint a nice door in 10 minutes. Now I can save about five minutes by painting the door flat. I can paint the door vertical. I have to worry about more runs. Uh huh. Painting a flat a door flat on its back is a whole lot easier. Like I say, on this part, I just slap on the paint, and I'm not worried about doing being pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm going kind of quick because I want it to. This, I've got a lot of area in this corner, and I want to get the paint just right and even. Okay, when I get this much room, I will clean up the edges now and make a nice brush stroke. What I'm doing is I'm cleaning up my brush. I have too much paint on there. And see as I land when I finish, I keep going and I gently lift off and I don't have a mark. Can you get a close up and I want to show what happens if you stop and start, you have the big old ugly, you know, but if you gently go off, you'll have, you won't see the brush strokes. This is how to paint a door without noticing any brush strokes. But the key is having the right amount of paint. You should brush loaded just right. sloppy here, but that's okay, I'm not worried about it. I'll paint this up in just a bit. It's okay to brush your paint, but there's a point where you, you can brush it too much and work your paint in. Um, it's okay to brush it back and forth quite a bit, but don't. If you're a perfectionist, this might be a difficult challenge. strokes. I get the paint on as smooth as I can and then I'll work on the brush strokes. I want them exact. They exact on the 45. I want to get the edges just right. I can't have it going this way and then leave a line there. I've got to go all the way to the edge and draw it straight. And I'll do the same thing on this side.
Now, I usually start at the top because if the door's up, I like painting from top down. But it's flat, it doesn't matter. I'll just start from the top and I have it. And what I'll do is I paint in straight strokes. I've got a piece of wood that starts and stops here, starts and stops here, the rails, the styles. So I'm going to start here on this one and I'm going to brush it in and cross up. And then I'm going to take it and draw my line this way. So I have a nice straight exact line where I stop and start where the wood would go. And I don't want to exaggerate it too much. If you exaggerate it too much, you'll see the line. I want it exact and sharp, but it doesn't have to be exaggerated. If, if I get too much paint, where I get it on there, it's, it's, then you can see it real strong. It's a little exaggerated. I want to take some of the paint off and make it smooth. I just want it very subtle. I'm gonna get, and see how I paint different I It's good to paint up and down in different directions to get in all the little nooks and crannies. And then I'll do a final quick stroke and make sure I get it exact. Yeah, got it exact. And I don't have to worry about the lifting the paint off the brush when I'm going across to the next board because I'm going to drag it down and draw my straight edge. Here I'm just drawing the straight edge so it won't dry hard and I'll start painting on this side. Like I said, if you can, it's best to paint with a wet edge. Here, I have to be careful because I don't want to start over so I've got to uh, lift off like a very gentle airplane before the line and I've got a nice straight edge. I think I'll go, I think I'll go all the way down to the end here and draw that I don't have to worry about. I wiggled my hand, I can do it again. There we go. That a little better. I got a little dust. Dust is my number one enemy. I hate dust. I make sure I get it off before I paint in there. Cross. And I'll draw my line gentle. And I gotta do it again because I got some missing spots here. Jab it in. And I don't want to paint what I already painted because what we're getting into what I call the red zone. If it's been drying, you don't want to brush it out. You can fix it, but it's a lot harder. It's smoother if it's kind of a wet edge.
all the way across. I don't care about lifting off because I'm going with the, to the edge. I'll put some paint here on this side. Get wet, and then I'll jump on the other side. I go back and forth to make sure I always have a wet edge. And if we're up to me, I would rather have a door that is brushed than a door that is sprayed, even with a perfect glass-like finish. A door that's brushed has a much nicer, natural look if it's brushed right. The brush strokes aren't um, unsightly, and they kind of flow with the wood. It gives a better, finer finish. It's a little more work to brush out a door, but it sure looks a lot nicer. Now you've talked about the paint being a two coat paint. You've taken a lot of time to make sure your brush strokes are correct and your lines are correct. Would you do that again on your second coat, making sure that all your seams and lines are, are correct? The second coat is more important than the first coat. Go ahead. Let me switch sides so I can keep my edges as possible and when you're painting two colors if, if what I mean the front outside is one color inside is one another color then whatever opens to the color is what you want on the side for example if the front door if this opens if this is the inside door and this opens inside I'd want the front to match the inside and the hinge would be the outside color. If it opens out, I would want the hinge to be the color that you see from the inside and the outside edge to be the color you see from the inside. Okay. So whatever opens up, that's the color you want the edge to be. That's good to know. Maybe you can paraphrase it better than I did. Nope, that's good. So it's described by a painter, not a speech writer. <laughs> now it's still kind of wet. I can make sure I can just go and I can double check. It looks really good. I stand back and I look and see if there's any drips or runs. Finish this last little bit here. I like to say I'm doing it every direction I can. And then in my final lift off. And that actually looks pretty good. There's a couple of areas I want to clean up. Um, right here it's kind of thick. Take my little tiny brush. Now don't be too worried on the first coat. It doesn't have to be exact. You can always do some repairs later. But what you don't want to do is you don't want any excess. You don't want too much paint. If you're missing a spot, you have a holiday. A holiday is where there's not enough paint. You can see through it. They call that a holiday. That's okay because the second coat will get that. I'd rather have a holiday than drips and runs. Holidays paint out real easy. Drips and runs, you've got to remove the drips and runs or they look really, really bad. The drips and runs determine uh, the amateurs. So anyone can paint a door and look like a professional if they follow the simple steps. It may take a little practice. You may have to paint it once or twice. And there you have the first base coat of the door.
We want to thank Jared for helping us learn how to paint a door. And you know, Jared, thank you so much. And you know, I think we're going to have Jared back for some more expertise. He's great. And we'll see you then on Woodworking with Wes.